Um, OK, so why isn't it clicking with Harry Kane up top at this moment in time? Stuart Pearce, the England legend, is alongside us. Alex Crook, Talk Sports Chief Football Correspondent, is here to analyse it as well. He got an ankle knock in March. Mm. Do you think it's a fitness issue that he's having or do you think that it is the product of a long, hard season and some very ropey pitches? Um, I, I think there's a multitude of things. I don't think the supply line from the team have been great for a centre forward. I really don't. I, too often I've, I've got a little bit frustrated when we've got the ball into wide areas and not crossed it for a centre forward to get on the end of it. Um, so I think that's played its part. He doesn't look as dynamic as I've seen him. I know he's not a dynamic type of player, mm. but I've not seen him look as dynamic as, as he has done before. And, and the thing that we don't know... And we surmise that there is an injury, an underlying injury, that is causing him a problem as, as part of this. Uh, we've been talking about this in the podcast, which comes out tomorrow, Euros All Access, and you think the biggest call that actually Harry, uh, that Gareth Southgate has got to make is that over Harry Kane or Ivan Tony. Now, I don't think anybody actually believes that he's going to drop his captain, no. but you think that Tony has done enough to suggest that he is the first cab off the rank should there be a, a continued down would sort of trend in terms of Kane's performances? Yeah, I think that's pretty clear. Uh, was it Denmark that Ollie Watkins came on against and, and made a bit of a difference, actually, just in terms of of stretching their defence? But obviously he's trusted Tony in the two knockout games. And I think Tony has made an impact uh, with his presence and, uh, you know, certainly has, has asked probably more questions of uh, the Slovakian and, and, the, uh, and the Swiss defence than Harry Kane has. But he's not going to drop Harry Kane. This is someone who scored 50 goals this season for club and country, someone who's led by example when it comes to England, and someone who more often than not comes up with big goals in, in big games. So he's going to start Harry Kane. How fit is he? I guess that's a question that, that Gareth Southgate will have to answer, but I'd be amazed, Stuart, if he's not first name on the team sheet. Yeah, Assuming he gets over that knock. I, I think the only judgment call for me, I think 10 out of the 11 are nailed on. I think it's Concer or Gahey. Which one? Which way do you go on that? Same system, back three again against the Dutch? Well, I'll tell you what, it improved us. We played a lot better playing out from the back, without a doubt. Uh, you know, the the beauty of, of the starting lineup, you can easily just juggle it round, put Trippier back in at sort of left back, mm. and go to a flat back four, if you like. Well, really, with it was only the one change. It was one change. Exactly. It, really? I that. mean, it wasn't personnel change, it was a system change. Yes. But it looked to me as if they had greater balance. Yep. It gave Saka great freedom to get up on the right hand side, mm. and it had meant that there was more protection. Mm. for the, the wing-backs. I thought Trippier did well as well actually getting up on that left-hand side and they looked m more in control of the game. There was a clarity about how they were playing. We've talked about the, the idea of them beating the press with Jordan Pickford's mm. long ball over the top of the Swiss pressure. Uh, but instead of, whereas previously I think that has happened because of desperation or because of not knowing mm. what to do, it looked like that was all within the plan yesterday. It certainly did. As I say, we played a couple of decent cultured balls over the press as such, mm. which was a real frustration to me in the previous games because I think we tried to play through no matter what. Um, and when you look at it, you've got, and there's been a lot of talk about it pre-tournament, about Foden and Bellingham playing as two number 10s. That's what we got, albeit they had freedom to go anywhere on the pitch and often did. And they did, yeah. Um, I, wa I worried actually in the build-up to the game that maybe it might be a little bit too congested in that central midfield area because you had Rice, Maynou, Bellingham, Foden all sort of in the same sort of space. And, and Kane, Kane loves to drop well. deep mm. into that as well. So I wondered if that would be an issue. But actually it wasn't because of the mobility that both those two, Foden and Bellingham, showed. Yeah, I think I still prefer Harry Kane to play as the number nine. I, I think he spent too much of this tournament dropping deep into midfield and you talk about the supply line into the box there was one move yesterday where they broke down the, the left hand side England and Harry Kane was behind three of his teammates who were busting a gut to get on the end well, of it you, you want your striker in the box look at the opportunities that Saka got uh, when he got down to the byline and cut the ball back several times and there was no one in the penalty exactly. area so I think that's something that Gareth has, has got to resolve there's more than enough midfielders in the team now that Harry Kane doesn't need to, to keep dropping as deep as he is I'll ask you both a question. Who do you expect to be in the box when Saka breaks to the byline like he did? Bellingham, Kane, Foden. And maybe the opposite wing back, potentially, yeah, to shut the back door. And, and by the way, Trippier did that. He got, mm. he got in at the back post a mm. couple of times as well. So, so they're the four players that you expect. You've got to break, break your neck to get in there. Mm. Now, are they spending too much time in the build? All of them. 
and I include Kane in that, maybe, but certainly the other two like to drop, like to get on the ball a little bit, and then by the time it gets out to Saka, they can't get into the box. I, I think there's been times when Bellingham's tried to do too much of that as well, when actually, you know, again, he's so good arriving late into the penalty area, just do that and let somebody else have the ball in mm. midfield. How do you stop them from playing too much in the build? I think what you've got to do is, and it's probably something we highlighted in commentary yesterday, when our three central defenders were on the build-up, I'm saying to Declan Rice, do not come beyond their forward line, their front three. Mm. Stay that side of it. Right. Also as well, their midfield, you, you're going to have to, I would always give the information to Foden and Bellingham, at least, at least one of you has got to stay beyond their midfield cause a problem to their central defenders. Mm. If they both come the other side of that, all of a sudden everything's in the eye line of, of the midfield and they don't cause a problem. Sometimes you've just got to be patient and it's the hardest thing in the world. Brian Clough used to say to us, the hardest thing in the world to do on a football pitch is stand still. And sometimes that is the most beneficial thing to do. Exactly. You know, look at Lionel Messi does that brilliantly, mm. especially to that at the World yeah. Cup brilliantly. Uh, more to come on England's performance. 03717223344. If you want to get involved, we'd love to hear uh, from you. What is this? Talk sport.